In this video, we're going to learn how to write our output to a file. So far, when we have something we want to output, for example, if I wanted to output some information about this variable age, I would have printed it to the console. The, the age is, and used my brackets, and printed the variable, and L, and it would have gone all to the console console output. But now we want to learn how to do it to a file. So instead of using this, what we're going to do, IOStream has all the output for console output, but so we won't use that. What we want to use is FStream, and that's for file streaming, file input and output. And to do output, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a file object and this is going to be an OF stream for output file stream. And we just, that's the type. And then we give it a name. So I'm going to call mine F out. It's kind of like C out, but it's file out. But really, that's a name that you can make up any name that you like. Once I've defined this file object, then I can open it. I use that by doing F out, the name of the object dot open. And then in parentheses, I'm going to put the name of the actual output file that I want. And I can create what output file I want too. I'm going to call mine output.txt. And then I've created a file. Now, because it's output, this file doesn't have to yet exist. So I can just go ahead and use it. And now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this object f out instead of c out. I will use the object f out. Now before I run this, um, this is the most difficult part about doing output with files in Xcode is finding where this file is going to be created. And so let's stop for a minute and talk about how you set that with Xcode. So go to Xcode, click on Preferences, and here you'll have a list of options. What you're going to want to do is go to Locations. And in locations, what we're looking at is derived data. And if you look at this, it gives you this path of where derived data is. And you can click on this arrow and go. it'll take you to that location in Finder. And here's the derived data, and it has all the data for the different projects. And so you can, you can have it just go to there. So we can go to this project, go to the build, go to intermediates. We don't have any complete, so there would be another folder called Files and Debug. The problem with using this location is that it's hard to find when you're outside of Xcode. And this arrow is really the only way to get there. Once you get out and try just finders, go to Users, Linda Do Hadway Library. This is a hidden folder, so you can't actually find it to go in and find where you want. So what we're going to do is choose Advanced. So another option is to change it and to change your build location to something custom. And here it says it's relative to the workspace. So what it's going to do is it's going to build folders inside the workspace folder. And it's going to be build slash files. And I'm going to click done. Once I do this setting, the next time I create a project, that is already going to be set for me. So it will always be relative to the products or to, work, to the workspace that I'm working in. Now that I've got that set, I'm going to run it and wait for it up here. It's building and run. It says build succeeded, but notice that we don't have any output down here. And in fact, it, it closed it from us. So let's go see if we can find this file. Now there's a couple ways. I'm going to go ahead and open it in Xcode. I'm going to go file, open, and I'm going to go find it. So here's my folder. It's in my folder 1405. Here's the folder for the project, writing to file, and each project has a folder of its own. If I go inside there, then I need to choose the build folder, and then files, and then debug. Once I get all the way there, there's this file, output.txt. And I can double click on it, uh, and it will open, and there it is. It wrote, the age is 25. And so we can see that file and see that we wrote our output right to that file. 
Now if we want to add this file to the project, then notice it doesn't show up here under products, but we can do file, add files to writing to file, and now we just have to go find it. So it's under documents, in my folder CS1405, in the folder writing to file, build, files, debug, and there it is, and I can add it, and then it will show up over here where I can always find it and go to it. And that'll make it a little easier as I output to it. So now if I go ahead and say, well, I want to output something else, maybe we're going to do the traditional hello world, we can write that to it, and now when I run it, it's building again, build is successful, and now I go to that file. Now it has the ages 25 and a hello world. Now watch what happens if, let's go ahead and add something up here higher, C out, oh, not C out, I want an F out, that's an easy thing, I want to use my file object. Welcome to my project. And I run it again. Now look what it's supposed to write. Welcome to my project, and it's supposed to output the age is 25 and hello world. Let's see what happens. And there it built succeeded, so I can look at it. And there it did exactly that. Notice that it doesn't have the ages 25 and hello world from last time. It only has what's written this time. Whenever you open an output file, what it does is it opens, it finds that file, it opens it, and it empties it. So you're starting from scratch, and it will only output what, what you've added. So if I take all of this away, right, and I just simply print out F out goodbye, and run it. That file output.txt will be opened and emptied. Right here when it opens, it'll be opened and emptied and then it will print out just goodbye. There's one more thing we want to do when we work with files is we open them up here but then when we're done working with them we want to also close them and you use the name of your file object dot close and notice that close doesn't need any arguments, so you can leave, leave the curly braces closed. Now you can use, now you can write to an output file simply by creating an OFStream object, opening it, and then using it everywhere you want to do your output.